In today's video, we're going to look at some very specific murders. Florida man murders. After that, we also have some murders lined up that have all occurred in the year 2020. Florida man kills his girlfriend to exercise the devil. This Florida man headline involves a man named Bobby McGee who killed his wife to get rid of the devil inside of her. In 1998, McGee stabbed his wife 17 times during exorcism. He says he was trying to take the devil out of her. McGee pleaded insanity, claiming he never meant to kill his wife. He wanted to save his marriage and thought the exorcism would help. His lawyers still maintain he's criminally insane. McGee is spending his time behind bars while receiving psychiatric care. Florida man killed his wife and blamed it on COVID. Last month, Florida officials arrested a Florida man for murdering his wife. When they questioned him about her earlier disappearance, he told them that she was sick with coronavirus. After a cell phone paper trail, police arrested David Anthony for the murder of his ex-wife, Gretchen. This Florida man sent mysterious texts to his estranged wife's friends and family. David Anthony sent mysterious texts to his estranged wife's friends and family from her cell phone. The text said that she'd been hospitalized due to COVID-19 and had conflicting information. One said that his wife, Gretchen Anthony, was on life support, and others said that she was attacked. Not only did Anthony not keep his story straight, the location of the texts were sent from a jewelry store where this Florida man was trying to sell women's jewelry. When police connected the dots, they arrested him in New Mexico. He's being held there without bond. Florida man kills his wife and her lover. Like something out of a soap opera, this Florida man headline involves a man walking in on his wife cheating on him with her lover. Immediately, he killed them both. Not only that, but this man found them right after being released from jail. Kenyatta Balami was a Florida man having a hard day. After being released after serving a year for failing to appear in court for a DUI manslaughter charge, Bellamy found out his wife had moved in with someone else. Angered by this, he tried to take the bus to confront her. Due to COVID, the bus wasn't running, so he couldn't take it. Was this Florida man going to let a bus stop him? Of course not. Three days later, he made it to their house and caught them in the middle of sexual intercourse. Bellamy proceeded to use a hammer and axe to murder both of them. Not only that, but Bellamy has a very long criminal history, which leaves officials wondering why he was let out in the first place. Florida man kills girl and her father over a dispute about a dog. An 82-year-old Florida man burst into his neighbor's house with his two handguns, shot him and his daughter, and then had a shootout with the police. An officer was hospitalized during the altercation. Now, what led to such a deadly altercation? It was an argument over a dog. According to a police report, Ronald Delcero was in court earlier that day over complaints about his dog from Alexander Hansman and his daughter Harper. Delcero's dog allegedly bit someone in the Hansman house, which led to complaints lodged with animal control. The St. Lucie County Sheriff, in a press conference about the incident, revealed the young girl's 911 call. Hearing such a young girl freaking out about her family being dead and worried she's next is something that no one deserves to hear. Florida man kills his entire family, including the dog. Florida man is facing the death penalty for four counts of capital murder 
for killing his wife and three children. They also tacked on an animal cruelty charge because he killed their dog. He was arrested for this and fraud on January 9th, 2020. Anthony Todd was arrested on these charges when police came to his home to serve him another arrest warrant for fraud. It turns out that this man fudged some insurance records for his clients and faced time for it. When the police came to his home, they found the decomposing remains of his entire family, including his three small children. Even more disturbing, family members requested a welfare check weeks earlier because they hadn't heard from the Florida family. They were told that the Florida man's wife and kids had the flu, but didn't hear anything after that. Police showed up, knocked on the door, and since there wasn't any apparent urgency, they decided to leave. The Gainesville Strangler The subject of several Florida Man headlines, Danny Rowling was the Florida Man behind a series of strangulation in Gainesville, Florida, where five college students were murdered. Dubbed the Jack the Ripper of Florida, Rowling was convicted and sentenced to death in 1994 for the murders. He was executed by lethal injection in 2006. Rowling's first kill was during a burglary where he killed five students. Not only did he kill them, but he posed the bodies before leaving the crime scene. The Florida man's signature was posing the bodies of his victims in sexually explicit positions before leaving. Rowling was caught when the Florida police arrested him on burglary charges. They found the tools in his car matched the ones used in the murders around Gainesville. And in the murder of Rowling's own father in Louisiana, including the matching signatures, Police had the evidence to charge this Florida man with several counts of murder. Honorable Mention Ted Bundy Did you know that Ted Bundy was a Florida man? Well, now you do. Bundy's last three murders were in Florida, including a killing spree in G, a mega house at Florida State, where he killed two young women and injured three more. His final victim was a 12-year-old girl, for which he was put to death in the electric chair in 1989. Bundy received two death sentences in Florida, not because they could get him twice, but so prosecutors could ensure his sentence would be carried out. What's even more interesting was the gaggle of Florida people present outside of his prison the morning he was executed. Some sold merchandise to commemorate the occasion, and one Florida man shot off fireworks the moment they learned Bundy had died. Many stuck around to cheer as Bundy's hearse drove past. A surging pandemic, political upheaval, natural disasters. 2020 has had an astronomically bad start. At this point, it goes without saying that 2020 is no ordinary year. In fact, 2020 is unprecedented in its death count in more ways than one. First degree murder has been flaring up all across America. New York Times reports that overall crime is down by 5.3% in many large American cities but murder in these cities is up by 16.1%. These staggering statistics are backed by overwhelming stories of murder in news reports. What is it about 2020 that has stirred up so much violence? Many point to civil unrest due to the pandemic and George Floyd protests, but the real cause is hard to pinpoint. Let's take a deep dive into some of the most troubling cases of this year. Vanessa Gullen Two months ago, 
20-year-old Vanessa Gullen vanished from Texas's Fort Hood military base. On July 3rd, the Army reported that Vanessa Gullen's remains were found near the Leon River, just east of where she went missing. After an autopsy, more graphic details were discovered about the heartbreaking murder. Gullen's family attorney reported that Gullen was bludgeoned to death with a hammer in the armory room where she worked. Following this, her body was transported from this location and then discarded near the river. Gullen's case gained notoriety particularly because she was subject to persistent sexual harassment, which is telling of the Army's history of sexual harassment. The events that led to this Gullen's murder are still unclear, but her reported experience with sexual harassment in the Army points to suspects who likely had involvement in her death. Gullen was about to file a harassment complaint against 20-year-old Aaron David Robinson the day after she was killed. However, Robinson committed suicide, shooting himself when confronted by investigators, according to the Killeen Police Department. Another suspect in the case, Cecily Aguilar, was arrested for supposedly helping Robinson dispose of Gillian's body. Fahim Saleh Fahim Saleh, CEO of Gokada, Nigeria's motorcycle ride hail company, was found dead in a luxury New York condo. Not only is there proof that Saleh was murdered, reports say that he was found dismembered his torso severed from his body and other body parts stuffed into bags found throughout his apartment and living room. Surveillance footage reveals Soleil entering into the elevator at his apartment complex in the lower east side of Manhattan before a man dressed in all black enters next to him. The man in black is suspected to be Soleil's assistant, but no footage actually captures the murder. One source says that the assailants started to attack him once they got inside the apartment where the murder and mutilation took place. No motive has been determined by police yet, but the NYPD is investigating how the mysterious attacker exited the apartment undetected by cameras. Soleil's death is greatly mourned by his family who said, His brilliant innovation, but his brilliant and innovative mind took everyone who was a part of his world on a journey, and he made sure to never leave anyone behind. The company he worked for called him a great leader and an inspiration for everyone. Dustin Parker It's no news that members of the transgender community face unrelenting violence. Like many before him, trans men Dustin Parker was subject to this raging hatred. Parker was fatally shot near the turn of 2020 on West Delaware Avenue. Driving a Rover electric taxi, Parker was found dead in the driver's seat. Motive unknown, Michelester police have been investigating Parker's death. Head of police, Kevin Hirog, says that they have investigators out running down leads right now. And that Parker was just a working man, making a living for his family, and he didn't get to come home. Parker was a founding member of Oklahoma's For Equality, McAllister. According to the Facebook group, a fundraiser is in place to benefit Parker's family during this tragedy. Many mourn Parker's death, saying that he was a steadfast friend, amazing husband, and generous to a fault. While investigators have yet to find evidence pointing to Parker's murder as an act of transgender hate, it's not something that they've taken off the table. Sadly, the likelihood of his death relating to prejudice is high. 
the National Center for Transgender Equality reports. Transgender people face extraordinary levels of physical and sexual violence, whether on the streets, at school or work, at home, or at the hands of government officials. More than one in four trans people has faced a bias-driven assault. Daniel Delgado In celebration of his 20th birthday, Daniel Delgado had planned a small road trip with friends to enjoy the heat of the summer. However, this trip was cut short when Delgado was targeted and gunned down while driving home with a friend near East Pacific Coast Highway and Drum Avenue in Wilmington. Entirely in the dark, police have found no motive for Delgado's death. He had no gang ties and they have ruled out road rage as a potential motive. They are currently seeking information from the public to find out why Delgado was shot. This mysterious shooting turned Delgado's birthday celebration into a wake. Heartbroken by the death of Delgado, his family and friends still sang him happy birthday and released red and white balloons with messages addressed to their deceased loved one.